Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is usmlvideos.net. Once again, this evening, I would like to welcome you to my channel and my website. Please visit my website at www.usmlevideos.net. Nowadays, you can subscribe to the USMLE video of the day and receive a new video every morning in your mailbox. Just go to our website at www.usmlevideos.net and uh, put your email in subscription box and you will see a new video every morning in your mailbox. Tonight I want to talk a few minutes about action potential on cardiac muscle cells. And this differs from other skeletal muscles because especially in three ways. Number one, cardiac muscle cells, it is self-generating. The rhythmic excitation is self-generating on cardiac muscle cells. I, in SA node, the actual activation starts, then it goes to the AV node and later to the Purkinje fibers and uh, throughout the ventricles. Secondly, this activation potential is conducted directly from cell to cell. And the specific feature of cardiac muscle cells is they are connected with intercalated discs. These discs and uh, other channels help the action potential to propagate from a cell to a cell directly. And thirdly, they have long durations. And these long durations or refractory periods help these cells prevent any kinds of re-entry arrhythmias. So these are the basic three important differences when we talk about cardiac muscle action potentials. Now, three important ions play role in cardiac action but potentials. Number one, potassium. Potassium, it mostly resides inside the cell. And number two, sodium. And number three, calcium sodium and calcium, they reside outside the cell in the interstitium. So, potassium stays inside the cell and its efflux outside the cell causes negativity within the cell. And as potassium goes inside, that, that creates a action voltage. In other words, some electric voltage potential or in other words, we can call it potassium equilibrium potential across the membrane. It is approximately 145, that is a normal concentration of potassium inside the cell and 4 millimoles potassium in the extracellular fluid and equilibrium potential is minus 90 millivolts. The same is true with uh, sodium. Sodium, it creates its own equilibrium potential approximately plus 70 millivolts. It's mainly extracellular in its distribution like 140 millimoles with an intracellular concentration of 10 millimoles. And uh, calcium finally, it produces an equilibrium potential of plus 100 millivolts. So, there are three ions, potassium, calcium and sodium. Potassium is mostly intracellular, whereas sodium and calcium are extracellular in their distribution. So, these are the fundamental points you must remember to understand cardiac muscle action potentials. Now, let us uh, go to the actual stages or phases. Remember, there are five phases. Phase 0, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, 
and phase 4. Five phases, very important to remember. And phase 4 is resting membrane potential. It is like a flat line that is phase 4. It is the resting membrane potential. After phase 4 comes phase 0. The phase 0 is rapid depolarization. And then after phase 0 comes phase 1. Phase 1 is actually the returning from the overshoot. The overshoot that happens due to phase 0 returns back in phase 1. So, phase, if phase 0 is like this, phase 1 goes like that. Then phase 2 comes. In phase 2, it is almost like a plateau. So, phase 2 is plateau. Then phase 3 is repolarization. That means, after phase 2, the plateau, in phase 3, it comes back. It comes back towards resting membrane potential. So, those are the five basic phases in cardiac action muscle put, uh, in uh, action potential propagation. Especially, we need to remember that in cardiac muscle, the actual centers like sinoatrial node, AV node, they are slow propagators. They are called slow response action potentials and others are called fast response action potential. There is a difference between these two. I will explain later. But first let us see which ions permeability changes during each phases. This is very, 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 very important you must remember. First resting membrane potential. During resting membrane potential that is phase 4, potassium it plays the major role in membrane permeability. Then comes phase 0, the rapid depolarization. Then sodium plays the main role. So, sodium's membrane permeability increases very rapidly during rapid depolarization, that is phase 0. Then phase 1 again, potassium. Potassium's permeability again increases during phase 1. Then phase 2 is plateau, calcium. Calcium plays the main role. Calcium's permeability plays a main role. This is very, very, very important. In cardiac action potentials, which ion plays the major role during the plateau phase, that is calcium. Then comes the phase 3, repolarization phase. Again, during this phase, potassium's concentration increases. Again, phase 4, potassium's concentration increases. So, basically, in these 5, phase 0 is sodium. Then 1, 3, 4 is potassium and 2 is calcium. I hope you remember those points very, very well because they are extremely important for your examination. Now, the difference between the fast response and the slow response. In slow response, you do not find that the fast sodium depolarization phase. That is the most important difference. You will find potassium, you will find calcium, you will, but that fast sodium rapid depolarization characteristic of a fast response action potential is not seen in the slow response. I hope you remember as always visit my website at www.usmlevideos.net where you can find hundreds of videos explaining thousands of most important points for USML examination. Have a good night. Thank you very much.